most trusted news source, ABC6 News at Noon. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I'm Doreen Scanlon. One more warm day. We take a live look outside over Providence right now. The sun is really shining over the city and temps like this as we hit the middle of October, Chelsea. I know I've been talking about it all week. Our warmest temperature of the day should be about 64 degrees. Instead, we're already almost about 10 degrees above that. Yesterday, we topped out close to 80. Not quite as warm today, but still well above average for this time of year. And honestly, a little bit muggy outside. The dew points are into the mid 60s. So you can feel that there is a bit more of that moisture content in the atmosphere. Most of us in the low to mid 70s right now, upper 60s out over the islands, out towards the Cape. All of us much uh, warmer than average, but a few degrees cooler again compared to where we were yesterday at this time. Nothing crazy, but certainly a, a change compared to yesterday's temperatures near 80 degrees. Right now we're seeing sunshine. You're getting some passing clouds at times. There's a few sprinkles passing up to our north as well, but we're going to stay mainly dry for the rest of the day. Just a mix of some sun and clouds through the afternoon and into the evening hours. Overnight's dry. Most of tomorrow during the daytime looks dry, but by later tomorrow, cold front approaches, and that's going to usher in some changes. I'll look at your full forecast in just a few minutes. Join. All right, Chelsea, thank you. And we turn now to our coverage of the coronavirus and a key date on the calendar for thousands of Massachusetts state workers. A vaccine mandate deadline on Sunday. Governor Charlie Baker issued an executive order mandating vaccines for all state employees back in August. That amounts to nearly 42,000 workers, including state police and the MBTA. At the time, Baker said he'd negotiate with workers unions ahead of the deadline. Those who refuse the vaccine will initially face discipline, and if they continue to refuse it, they'll be fired. It applies to anyone working in person or teleworking. There is no testing option. And Providence's police union and the mayor's office also in disagreement over vaccine mandates. In a lengthy statement posted to Twitter earlier this week, the Fraternal Order of Police said there is no clear policy in place for vaccination and mandatory testing. They say a letter delivered to the mayor on September 9th asking for clarification went unanswered. But the mayor's office says the city's lawyer spoke to the FOP's lawyer multiple times after that letter was sent. And the city policy only exempts public school employees, not police officers. That policy requires vaccination or once weekly testing. And the FDA's advisory committee is meeting today to discuss Johnson & Johnson vaccine boosters and mixing and matching booster shots. The committee voted 19 to nothing yesterday to recommend Moderna's half-dose booster for certain populations, including the elderly and high risk. J&J &J wants the FDA to decide who would get its booster and when. Brown University's Dr. Ashish Jha says the mix and match strategy has promise for some people. I don't think it's a big deal if you got a Moderna or Pfizer to mix it. It's clearly safe. It probably is uh, not necessarily much uh, more beneficial. Where there does seem to be some benefit is adding a Moderna or a Pfizer to a J&J &J vaccine. Again, it's preliminary data, uh, but there is some evidence that may be better off doing that. A decision on boosters always lies with the CDC director. And tonight's homecoming football game in Smithfield will go on as planned. It was up in the air after a COVID outbreak among the football team. That outbreak caused Smithfield to cancel its last two games. Despite that, the principal says the homecoming game will go on as planned. Smithfield taking on Situate. And playoff fever is in the air. The Red Sox have safely landed in Houston ahead of tonight's game one of the American League Championship Series with the Astros. Casey Kantz is live in the newsroom with more on tonight's matchup. Casey? Well, Doreen, here we go. A little over eight hours away now from first pitch at Minute Maid Park, a rematch of the 2018 ALCS in which the Red Sox won en route to a World Series title that season. And no question... There's been a lot of history between these two teams in recent years. It was just a season before that 2018 ALCS matchup that the Astros won it all with Alex Cora being the bench coach for the Strohs that season. That team, of course, found guilty of stealing signs, and Cora was said to be directly involved. He's since apologized and moved on, and now back in Boston, his Red Sox set to face a lot of guys from that 2017 team still on the Houston roster with a trip to the Fall Classic on the line. Looking ahead to tonight, He's showing a lot of confidence in Chris Sale, giving Sale the ball tonight for Game 1 after Sale struggled in Game 2 against the Rays in the ALDS. Here is Chris Sale. I think experience helps. Um, you know, knowing, knowing what you're coming down into. Uh, like you said, you know, we've been here before uh, a, few, a couple times in the, in the postseason. So, um, you know, just more of the same. You know, i got to be aggressive. I know, I know these guys have a good lineup. Um, you know, but I also know what we're capable of. 
Uh, I just got to go up there and throw up as many zeros as I can. Um, you know, keep it keep it close and, and let our offense, you know, shine and do what they do. And we'll see. Framber Valdez will get the start for the Strohs tonight. Let's take a look at that schedule. The Sox and Astros first get together tonight. Game one just after 8 o'clock. Tomorrow's game, 420 ahead of game one of the NLCS. And the series returns then to Fenway for games three and four next week. Games five to seven only being played if necessary. We do know that Nathan Ivaldi will start tomorrow afternoon for the Sox. I want to tell you about this too. The Worcester Red Sox, they are inviting you to Polar Park for a watch party. It is free to get in. Gates open at 6.30 tonight. Food and drinks will be sold. You may also get the chance to check out the Polar Park Pumpkin Patch while you're there. A contest for fans to decorate pumpkins and have them displayed before Halloween. Again, Game 1 gets underway tonight from Houston just after 8 o'clock. Full coverage coming up later today on ABC6 News First at 4. For now, live in the newsroom, Casey Kantz. ABC 6 News. All right, Casey, thank you. And some big news from another local sports team. The Boston Bruins have signed Charlie McAvoy to an eight-year extension. The deal will pay McAvoy $76 million over the eight years, a $9.5 million hit against the salary cap annually. McAvoy signs the deal at the young age of 23. The defenseman finished fifth in the Norris Trophy running last year, an award given to the top defender in the NHL. McAvoy was drafted by the Bees back in 2016. And ABC 6 News at noon tracking some of today's headlines now. In North Smithfield, police are investigating a serious car crash. Police tell us it happened on private property on Iron Mine Hill Road this morning. One person was taken to the hospital with what police described as serious injuries. And loved ones will gather tonight to remember three young men killed in a car crash earlier this month. 23-year-old Brandon Verrocchio of West Greenwich, 22-year-old Gianni Guerreri, also from West Greenwich, and 21-year-old Alex Banner from Exeter all died back on October 5th when their car went off 95 in West Warwick and hit a tree before bursting into flames. Police say they were going over 100 miles an hour. All three graduated from Exeter West Greenwich High School, and so tonight, friends and family are holding a lantern send-off on the football field in tribute to them. It's set for 7 o'clock. It's sentencing day for two convicted killers from Fall River today. Kevin Lara and Tavon Pyers were convicted late last month in a murder from 2015, but the sentencing was delayed. The two men, who were teenagers at the time of the murder, were found guilty of shooting and killing Anthony Carvalho. And children in Rhode Island will soon have the chance to get vaccinated. An announcement coming Thursday at Governor Dan McKee's press briefing. He was saying that as soon as the federal government approves vaccines for kids 5 to 11, the state will start giving them out. The governor telling ABC6 kids could start getting the shot even by November. Currently, 80,000 children will be eligible. We are ready to move full steam ahead to make sure that everything is in place so that once it's available, parents are already prepared for how to get started in getting their children in this group vaccinated continues to say the vaccines will be given primarily by pediatricians and also at community and state run sites some schools will be eligible with permission of parents coming up here on abc6 news at noon an update on former president bill clinton's condition after he was brought to the hospital yesterday with a non-covid illness and an nypd officer expected to be charged with murder what weapon police say she used in a domestic dispute
Now to the latest on former President Bill Clinton, who is hospitalized out in California. Doctors say he's battling an infection which landed him in the hospital. ABC's Rita Roy has the latest. Overnight, Hillary Clinton walking out of Irvine Medical Center in Orange, California, seen leaving in a motorcade. Her husband, former President Bill Clinton, hospitalized there, being treated for an infection in his blood called sepsis. Dr. Imran Ali isn't involved with his treatment, but notes in general, infections are important to treat. Sepsis can be a serious matter. We are concerned about a decrease in blood pressure, and we also need to monitor the heart. Doctors stressing it is not related to COVID and is not related to Clinton's history of heart disease. They add they are in touch with his medical team in New York. It's the latest health scare for the 75-year-old since leaving office. He had quadruple bypass surgery in 2004 and a pair of stents implanted in 2010. In the past, the former president has attributed his health problems to a bad diet, a busy work schedule, and ignoring warning signs. Maybe if I'd stayed on a lower fat diet, you know, maybe if I had not eaten so many hamburgers and steaks, you know, which I love, maybe if I'd, you know, I had slightly less stress in my life. I worked as hard since I left office as I did when I was there. Maybe it would have been different. He has since changed his diet and has been vegan for years now. According to the hospital, Clinton was given an IV and is responding well to antibiotics. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. And a shocking crime out of the UK today. British conservative lawmaker Sir David Ames has died after being stabbed several times. The attack happened at a church in the area that he represented at Parliament. The police say they've arrested a man following the incident and no one else is being pursued in connection to the attack. Eyewitnesses say the 25-year-old man entered the church and stabbed Ames multiple times. There's no information about his motives. And an off-duty New York police officer is expected to be charged with murder after allegedly shooting her ex-girlfriend and killing another woman. It happened outside a, or inside rather, a Brooklyn home earlier this week. Police say 31-year-old officer Yvonne Wu was waiting for the couple to arrive. Wu allegedly opened fire, wounding her 23-year-old ex-girlfriend and killing 24-year-old Jamie Liang. Police believe the incident was premeditated and that Wu used her service weapon. Coming up here on the news at noon, it looks like a collector's closet, but it's actually the hall that Mass State Police took in of fake IDs from one particular spot where they collected all these fakes. And Chelsea has another look at your weekend forecast when we come back.
Well, check out this photo shared by the Massachusetts State Police. It's a collection of fake driver's licenses collected by officers this summer on Nantucket alone. Police say more than 500 fake IDs were seized by the Nantucket barracks. All 500 plus were destroyed. Troopers encourage youngsters to have a Coke and a smile instead. And now, your ABC6 Storm Tracker weather with meteorologist Chelsea Priest. Just looking at that, trying to point out all the states. It's like that game when you're on a road trip, trying to find the different license plates. Plenty of states on those licenses there. That's crazy. Uh, what we are looking at outside as we head into the weekend is some patchy color across most of Rhode Island and right up along the coastline, certainly at peak for areas in far western Mass, western Connecticut as well. And the farther north you go, eventually it's past peak. We've hit the peak and now those leaves are coming down. Another fall activity to do this weekend, maybe a corn maze. We have a little corn maze forecast for you. Unfortunately, the beautiful weather we've seen all week long doesn't continue for the weekend. So each day is kind of a so-so day. Tomorrow, I recommend going early. Later in the day, the breeze starts to pick up. It's still a warm day. We're still in the low to mid 70s, but it gets breezy later in the day. And eventually some scattered showers start to move in ahead of some heavier rain that arrives later in the evening and overnight. Then on Sunday, should be an okay day. We start to dry out, but we do have some heavy rain overnight. So some things may be a little muggy, mug, muddy, a little soggy out on some of the fields. Outside right now, it's still beautiful. Temperatures are in the low to mid 70s, upper 60s, out towards coastal Rhode Island and coastal Mass. Average high for this time of year in Providence is 64 degrees. So once again, we're well above that. Temperature wise this afternoon, we are on the warm side of an approaching cold front. You're looking at overnight temperatures staying in the 60s. So we wake up tomorrow morning very mild and tomorrow we are still on the warm side of the front. But you can see exactly where that front is located tomorrow at 330. Cooler air on the western side. We're on the warmer side of things. But that cold front comes through overnight and by early Sunday morning, we're still OK temperature wise, low 50s. That is still above average, but that's just the start of the cooler air settling in more seasonable on Sunday afternoon with temperatures in the 60s range. Satellite radar image right now is pretty quiet. You're seeing partly sunny conditions. At times it's bright. At times there's some clouds. There's a few sprinkles showing up to our north right now. Most of that activity stays to our north, but you'll see a few clouds coming through for the afternoon hours. And again, we're tracking cold front way off to our west, and that will be approaching as we head into tomorrow. Overnight will be mostly cloudy. Again, tomorrow for most of the day, it's a mostly cloudy day. Breeze starts to pick up in the afternoon, and in the afternoon there may be some spotty showers developing. I have this stopped at 9 o'clock, and we're still seeing some of the heavy rain and isolated rumbles of thunder off to our west. So it won't be until late tomorrow night that we get into some heavy rain and isolated thunderstorms. By 5 a.m. on Sunday, all of that is starting to push offshore. Sunday afternoon looks brighter, but you may get a few clouds coming through and a few little sprinkles at times on Sunday, but it's not a lot of rain on Sunday. This is what we're looking at from the Storm Prediction Center for tomorrow evening. There is a marginal risk of severe weather, so it's a very low risk, but it is there. So we'll watch for some stronger thunderstorms tomorrow evening and tomorrow night, especially overnight. Uh, heavy rain, thunder, lightning, gusty winds, all the potential as that cold front works through. It is bringing quite a change. We've obviously been very warm this entire week and dry. The cold front comes through, bringing an end to our very mild weather and our dry weather. On Sunday, you're looking at temperatures in the 60s. Monday looks cool. We get rid of that low pressure system and it's still breezy and chilly out there, but most of next week in the mid to upper 60s. Dory? All right, Chelsea, thank you. Well, a New Hampshire woman is standing by her man, literally. For 12 hours each day, Valerie Dow has sat in a lawn chair outside the Concord Hospital where her husband, Scott, is battling COVID-19, and she FaceTimes with her husband. Valerie says she knows they can FaceTime from anywhere, but she wants Scott to know that she is right there. Nurses say they could feel the connection and made a sign that says, Hi, Val. Well, their collective will worked. Doctors say Scott can go home today. Coming up next here on the news at noon, continuing coverage of the supply chain issues all across the country. We're going to hear from one logistics director who's concerned about toy availability for Christmas.
Back now with consumer news and the gridlock in the supply chain could leave some shelves empty this holiday season. ABC's Kaylee Hartung is at the Port of Los Angeles and got an inside look at the around the clock effort to get goods into stores. This morning as toys fly off the shelves with no stock to refill and prices rise on everything from clothing to groceries. There's an all out push to get goods off those backlog ships and into stores in time for the holidays. What we're doing is this trying to squeeze every minute, every hour of efficiency out of this port complex that we can. Longshoremen in the port of Los Angeles telling me some of these containers have been sitting here for six months. The problem is the entire supply chain. If there's a truck available to get cargo off the docks of the port, it could come to a warehouse like this. How long the goods wait for the next truck is another potential delay. I think domestically, because the truck driving shortage is such an issue, we're going to see issues all the way through 2022. What's in these containers? Could be anything from toys to clothes to beauty products to auto parts to everything. Do you think these goods will get to store shelves in time for Christmas? What is that cutoff? It was probably uh, realistically about a month ago. Despite the stress, this Alabama toy store reassuring customers. Shop early, try to get the, the toys that you know your, your uh, kids want. Shop local if you can, because that's more than likely where you're going to end up getting um, what you need this year. When we come back, we're going to check back in with Chelsea for another look at the forecast. Stay with us. Beautiful again today. Today's our last very dry, very mild day. Tomorrow still mild, but we get more clouds. We get the breeze picking up and eventually cold front comes through. Some spotty showers develop later in the afternoon. It's overnight. We have the risk of some heavier rain and isolated thunderstorms. Some lingering showers at times on Sunday. Bigger story is that it's going to be a little bit cooler and more seasonable into next week with temperatures actually where they should be for what? this time of year. This has to end? Feel like October. Uh, oh, I know. All right. Okay, Chelsea. Yeah. Thank you. And before we go this afternoon, we want to share something with you, our viewers, that ABC 6 News at Noon is going to take a little break. Yeah, for the month of November, the two of us will be working mm -hmm. on some special projects to bring you during our other ABC 6 newscasts. And of course, we thank you, both of us yes. really, truly do so much for watching ABC 6. And our news will continue today on ABC 6 News First at 4. Have a great afternoon, everybody.